Hey guys. So for today's video, I'm going to be working on a project for myself. And this is going to be a cover for the front of my Erin Condren Life Planner. For those of you who aren't planner people like pencil paper, you know, planner users, essentially Erin Condren is a planner company that releases a planner every year or several planners every year. And the most recent edition, which they launched, I believe last year, was interchangeable covers. So you didn't have to commit to one cover for the entire year. You could actually pull the cover off and replace it. Now, on the Erin Condren website, there are several... Um, planner covers that you can choose. However, there is a bit of a wait or a delay in terms of turnaround time for waiting for that planner to get from the production facility to you. And they just recently released a new line of planners and it was, you know, highly anticipated in the planner world or for, you know, their dedicated customers. So right now there is a very, very long turnaround time at the Erin Condren facility. So if you ordered something right now that you want it to be personalized, you potentially could be waiting upwards of a month to actually receive it because they print and hand coil on demand. So I've always considered buying the additional planner covers to change in and out, but I'm always very impatient. And I would love to have one for the different holidays every month, but they're a little pricey at that $10.95 price point. And I'm impatient. Like I said, I just don't want to order it and then have to wait a month because by then I won't necessarily get to use it as long as I want to use it. So having considered all that, I decided the best option for me would actually be to make one. Now, if you don't have a, an Erin Condren planner or you don't have any type of planner that you want to make a dashboard for, you could totally take this same idea that I'm going to use to create this planner cover and just make an art print like for your house. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is actually draw the front part that's going to be the front of, front panel. So I have a rectangle now on my mat, and I'm going to go to this sizing tool and change the measurements of this to 6 and 3 fourths to 8 and 7 eighths because that's what the original planner cover measures, the actual paper portion. So my width is going to be 6.75 and my height is going to be 8.875. That is an odd measurement. Um, yeah, so that was some mental math that I had to do real quick. So this, it looks like something wonky happened. So let me go back and fix that. And then I'm going to hit apply. So 8.875 and 6.75. So this is what the front panel of my planner is going to look like or what the, the final dimensions will be. So I've already selected a design from the online store. It's this subway art and I'm going to go ahead and double click it and as you can see there are two designs. One on the left and one on the right. And that's actually because it says in the file description that this is one of those layered ones where they're, they've been grouped together different ways. So if I right click and I ungroup this design, you can see that the words have been separated on this one on the right and they're all together on this one on the left. So I'm going to select everything on the left and actually delete it because it's easier for me to color in the one that's already been sorted. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the center, and now I can start coloring this image in. So I'm going to select every other word and color one set blue and then the other set red. So I'm going to select the happy, wave, celebrate, watch, love, and make sure it's every other one. And fill this in with the color blue. And then I'm going to go in and do the same thing with the opposite and color those in red. So I'm going to select the light, sing, picnic, wear, and be, and fill those in red. And then all these other words, I'm actually going to go ahead and just make a, a dark gray. So I'm going to hit control Z because I actually made that jump quite a bit. So I'm going to go back and select these. If it moves a little bit, I'm not really bothered too much, but when it moves a lot, I feel the need to undo it. So I'm going to select all these, and I'm going to make these uh, darker gray. 
So now you can see for the most part, the design looks almost the way I want to have it, except there's still a red cut line around each one of these numbers and letters, and I still haven't filled in my stars. So I'm going to select the stars and fill those in red for now. I may change my mind and make them blue. Actually, you know what? Let's stick with blue. So these have been colored in finally, and they all still have that red cut line, so I'm going to select all of it and go to my line color option and I'm going to turn the color off completely so that it's gone. And while I have everything selected, I'm also going to go into the silhouette cut settings and say no cut to all of this because I'm just going to be printing this image. I just want this outline part to actually cut. So now it's time for me to kind of size up this image the way I want it to be. So I'm going to select all of this except for these stars because it looks kind of off. So I'm gonna move the stars down here and then resize all of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it. And in this selection process, I just realized this comma right here didn't get colored in. There's a little box right there, which might be really hard to see. So I'll zoom in. So I'm gonna uncheck this and reselect that comma. If I can grab it, there we go, and color that in gray. There we go. Okay, so now that I've fixed that, I'm going to go ahead and group this entire image together. So to group it together, you're going to draw a box around everything, right click, and then click group. And then my stars are going to just sit down at the bottom. I thought about putting this over here, but I would like to make this bigger. So I'm going to leave it down towards the bottom. So I'm going to zoom out and draw a box around all of this and resize it to probably as big as it'll go without looking odd. So now we're getting pretty close to the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and make these stars a little bigger and put them here. And I'm almost done now. So all I need to do is just align all these things together. So I'm going to select the words and the stars and center these and then group it together. So this all moves together and then I can go ahead and select everything and then center it. So I'm going to select all of the images and then say align center and align middle. Now, if you decide that there's not, you know, too much space somewhere, you can still grab it and resize it if that's what you want to do. So if you decide you want this to be a little bigger, you can grab the handles and still resize it. But ultimately, this looks pretty good to me. And if you look at it from the print menu or from the cut menu, you'll see that the only thing that's going to cut is actually this outside line. And because I'm going to be printing something and then I want it to cut in a very specific place, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my registration marks. So right now, it's off right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and say type one for my Cameo. And the only thing that's in the wrong part of the image is the actual frame portion. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this over slightly to get this out of the hatch mark zone. So it can be off center and it'll cut just fine, but it definitely ha can't be in that area. So I'm gonna go ahead and send this to the printer and then cut it out. So here's my printed sheet and I decided to add a little bit of sparkle to it by coloring in the blue and red images with my Wink of Stella pen. And I'm not being super cautious about this, I'm just kind of coloring it in to get the glitter down and not worrying if I get to the edges because I have a fear that if I use way too much of it, it's going to smear when I stick it in the laminating pouch. So here's what it looks like with all the colored in words covered with Wink of Stella. You can catch a little bit of that glitter on that Celebrate. For my lamination, I'm using some really thick laminating pouches that I found on Amazon. And this is actually 10 mil, so it's the same thickness as the cover that actually came with my planner. And I'm using the original cover to align this new image 
with the old one. That way I only have to trim off the excess plastic from the side and the bottom. And I'm using my mink machine to laminate because it actually gets hot enough to melt 10 mil uh, lamination sheets. Because this laminate material is really thick, I'm going to use my heavy duty trimmer to trim off the excess from the bottom and the side. And I'm just using the top portion as the measurement guide. And you can still see a little bit of that sparkle through the clear laminate. To punch my holes, I'm going to use the old cover as a guide and color in each one using dry erase marker. And that's so I'll be able to see it when I punch through with my crocodile. You can also take this to an office supply store and they'll be able to spiral punch it for you at a low price as well. And here's what it looks like when it's been punched. And I laminated a blue cover for the back as well. Now to make this so it'll pop onto the spiral, I'm going to take my scissors and just cut partially through each one of the holes so that it snaps in later just by pushing it down. And here you can see I can use my fingers just to push it down onto the spiral and wherever it gets stuck, I'm just using an old gift card so that I don't cut or jam my fingers. So here's what the final product looks like attached to the front of my life planner. I have a link to the supplies I use down in the description box down below. Thanks for watching.